Okay, model railroad fans. Uh, this video is primarily directed at uh, UJMRI script wannabes. I'm not going to show any trains, so if you don't care about scripting, you may just want to exit. So this uh, this script that I'm going to show you is a test script I wrote to play with uh, what I call subroutines. So instead of having to write the same code over and over uh, made a subroutine. If you saw that in my uh, grain train video where it moves the different grain cars, I decided to do one that I can use for sounds and also to start my train and stop my train. So this is the basic imports of the, the JMI script. This I'm, I'm defining a sound object as a particular wave file. So this is a road crossing sound. You've heard that on my videos. So I'm just setting it to this uh, variable. This is where I'm starting my class statement. I just call it testing. So this definition from here to here, it just runs the crossing sound any number of times. So this, you tell it the name of the uh, handle and how many times you want it to play this sound. So it just repeats that sound playing. It does have a pause in between some of these and uh, I wait two seconds and start again. So I don't have that timing exactly right but you get the idea what it'll do. The next one rings the bell. So this is just called ring bell. Again the handle name doesn't have to be self, it can be whatever you name it. And then the duration in milliseconds. In other words, how long you want the bell to ring. So you just start the bell, wait so many milliseconds, and turn it off. So I'm going to show you, even though that's only three steps, to execute it requires one step. This is a longhorn. Let me move this down again. This one's a little more interesting. So this is called long horn, again the handle name. How long do you want the horn to ring? How much time do you want to pause before it rings again? How many times do you want to ring it? And this is ditch lights, whether you want the ditch lights to come on or off. I didn't get that quite working right, but you can ignore that. So anyway, I'm just printing the uh, variables that come in. I'm messing with this lights thing. You don't have to worry about it. just to totally ignore this. I was testing this. I actually turned on the cab chatter to see if why my uh, ditch lights weren't coming on. I haven't solved that yet, but don't worry about it. So here's the key part. So while the count number of times is greater than zero, turn on the long horn, wait so many milliseconds. That's the the pause duration or the the duration for the horn to ring, turn off the horn, pause so many milliseconds, and loop back through the loop the, until the counter is, is uh, zero, and it'll drop out. So again, what that does is it rings the horn for so long, pauses, and does it so many times, just ignore all the reference to light. Okay, the next one I think is pretty interesting. This one I call accelerate. And you know, when you set your speed under script control, you know, you set it to say 0.02 and the train just jerks and starts. And if you want it to go faster, you set it to 0.05 and it just jerks and goes up that fast. So this particular submarine submarine subroutine um, gradually increments the speed on the train so how this works is again that's your handle name so this tells it how much of an increment you want how long to wait until you increment again and then how many times do you want to do that so this is really important so you set your start 
equal to the current speed. Now, if the, if the locomotive is sitting there idle at speed zero, I, the start actually ends up at minus one or something like that. So you have to set it to zero. So then I'm just printing what comes in here. You don't need that. Here's my count times. Here's my speed where I set it to start. Okay, so while my counter is greater than zero, and that's how many times I want to increment the speed, set the throttle to speed of the variable. Wait the delay time. Add the increment to the speed. Decrement the loop. I'm just printing for testing and then return. So it'll just sit here and loop so many times incrementing that speed. And this is from where it starts. So it doesn't have to be dead, dead stopped to run this. So if it's running along at a certain speed and you want to speed it up, you can just issue this command. It'll pick up where it's at and just go up from there. Okay, then conversely, we're going to need a decrement or a decelerate command. Let me turn that a little bit. And it works very similar. So you pass it basically the same parameters. It checks what speed it's at. And then it subtracts the increment from the speed and rotates through the, the loop. So no matter what it's at, it'll just keep decrementing the speed. And it won't necessarily get it down to zero. So right at, if you want it to stop, you can slow it down and then issue your set speed to zero. And what I do is I use these two in combination where I'll speed it up with this one and then I'll slow it down with this one in the, with the same variables. So let's look at how the script looks on this. I got these sheets taped to the back of my uh, desk. It has a little bookcase over it. Okay. Sorry about the movement here. Okay, so this is the actual uh, program. It's its a little definition where I'm picking up which locomotive I want, setting it to forward. Here's the handle I call self. You can call that anything. Okay, so I'm setting the light on so I know it's starting. I'm going to ring the bell for two seconds. Again, those are milliseconds, so that's two seconds. I'm going to run the longhorn for two second durations 50 milliseconds pause and do it three times. The Y is for the ditch lights. Ignore that as it's not working. Here's the accelerate command. So I want it to accelerate 0.01. Then in 500 milliseconds, I want it to speed up. I want to roll through this eight times. So it's going to be running at speed 0.08 when it's done. I want to let it run. This is a testing purpose. It's six seconds. Then I want to decelerate for the same amount of time. I want to run the crossing signal for three times and then I want to set the speed to zero. And I want to return and I want to execute it. So that's an example of how your program really has fewer statements since you're using subroutines. And if you're using a pretty long program, like when I move those green cars up into position underneath the green uh, co-op. That was quite a long program and by using these subroutines I reduced the number of steps and I also reduced my chances of error as I type these in. So I hope you found this uh, useful. If not, uh, just ignore that I did it.